I was very fortunate after the liturgy to be able to actually touch one of the relics and you get a shiver through your body knowing that this was a special person that you are actually witnessing something that was theirs. I get a warm feeling in my heart like Jesus is holding my heart. You know it's kind of a hard feeling to explain. It really is the power of the Eucharist. It's Christ's body. He's there. Not a lot of people get to experience that and I'm thankful that I got to. I was just in awe. <laughs> Blessed Carlo is pretty well known in these days, a uh, young man who died in 2006 from leukemia. Not from a very religious family, but himself fell in love with the Eucharist, and by his love of the Eucharist drew his family back into relationship with the Lord. Being almost a daily communicant, wanting to be with the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. He's known for computer programming, for creating a website dedicated to Eucharistic miracles, so you can still find all of that material online still today, pointing to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. St. Manuel died in 1940. He's known as the Bishop of the Abaddon Tabernacle. When he was first ordained and sent his first assignment, he found no people, a dilapidated church, and the Lord abandoned by himself in the tabernacle. And he reflected once about all the sorrows that were in the tabernacle, the no room in the inn, the being abandoned by his disciples, being betrayed, all of that sadness present. And so to be devoted to the Lord, he desired to be physical closeness to the Blessed Sacrament to the point where he said that when he died, he wanted to be very close to a tabernacle. And so again, his life, a life of devotion to the Blessed Sacrament again, meant to point us to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So as many people know, we're in the midst of the Eucharistic Revival, a process of reinvigorating devotion to the Eucharist by Catholics so that it can bear fruit in our lives by what we do. Blessed Carlo has been named one of the um, patrons of that process, and his relics were made available to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops um, for the purpose of uh, the revival. The relics that were here at school today were first-class relics, which means that they were parts uh, of the remains of St. Manuel and Blessed Carlo. In addition to first-class relics, we, we also have in our tradition second-class relics, which are anything that the saint used regularly, like maybe a habit, for example, if the person was religious, uh, or um, possessions, that sort of thing. Then the third-class relic is any object that is touched to a first-class relic. It's a way of having that sacramental, that physical object to keep with us and, and to guide our private devotion. So while we may not have the first class relic or, or the remains of the saint with us all the time, we have that object that has touched them. Veneration of relics has been part of our customs since almost the beginning. Uh, our value, our finding value in relics stems from the days of the persecution of the Christians in Rome where they hid in the cemeteries and they celebrated mass on the tombs of the martyrs. And so it then became a custom to make sure that the relics of martyrs were in the altars where mass was celebrated. It's not just limited to the martyrs anymore, but to the saints as well. And so the idea of being close to the saints, physically close to the saints, has been with us since the first days of the church. And so we go to venerate the relics of the saints um, sometimes by a bow, by a sign of a cross, by kissing the relic, by holding prayer cards to the relics, or a rosary to the relic. And we do this to remember the saints are real people, that they faced all the trials that we face, that they are successful in faith, and they're meant to be an inspiration for us to, and to remember that they pray for us before God in heaven, and their prayer is powerful for us. We're not alone in the journey of faith, ever alone. Last year we did bring the um, presentation of the miracles that Blessed Carlo had accumulated down to our parish in Meadville. And so that first got me interested in, oh wow, even a young teenager is able to find out all of this and spread the word. And he was the same age as me. I was born she was a few months the same after him. As he was. 
it was just really interesting to find out that then a relic was coming up here and that there would be a presentation about more miracles. So of course, my mom really wanted us to come and see it and we said, yeah, let's go. I think anytime you can be in the presence of relics that are truly from that individual, there's nothing that can replace that and it's something that we don't see as much, especially over here in the United States. I just have to say it was very moving to know that a piece of somebody was here present for the student body to witness. You know, Blessed Carlo is a challenge to me because very often I end up being the guy who's down on technology and saying, it's all in the way, you know, put your phone away, that sort of thing. I think he shows me that the new evangelization is one that uses all forms of communication. So I should probably not be so hard on technology in my own life. I'm an artist and I'm also kind of a computer nerd, so kind of both go along with the saints. Um, I can use my art to express my emotions and my beliefs, how I feel about things and just spread positivity through my art. And what I want to go into is cybersecurity, so I can use that to really prevent any hate that's going on and really use that for good and use it for God. It's been an inspiration to maybe step up a bit and make my participation in the Eucharistic revival concrete. We need it as a church in the United States and so I think I feel the Holy Spirit stirring that desire up in me to, to get more involved. Carlo Acutis, I've had the opportunity to do some research into his work and being able to personally learn more of the Eucharistic miracles has really deepened my own faith. And with that opportunity to learn more about historical miracles, I've been able to then use those examples in the classroom and introduce the students to the presence of Christ in the Eucharist in a very tangible way and a very scientific way, which has been a tremendous support for not only my faith, but my students. Two and a half, three years ago when I put this together, I had already dedicated this kind of Blessed Carlo, was talking about Blessed Carlo, but at that time people weren't even really talking about him. And now the relics are here. It's his actual heart, just like it's, you know, Jesus' heart in these miracles. And every time I give the talk, I feel like I share the platform with him. But this time, I felt that in a more powerful, palpable, kind of sense. It was just an incredible experience to actually give this presentation with the relics here and to venerate them. Did you see the end where people raise their hands? Isn't that awesome? That's my favorite part. Every time, anywhere from two-thirds to like about 90% of people say that their faith increased. I love that. Any person can do good things for the world. And no matter what age you are, that's something really important to hear, but I also think it was particularly important to be reminded that even at the age of 15, with the example of Blessed Carlos, you have the power to do good in the world. You just have to trust yourself and let yourself do those things. For the students, I really hope they learn from Blessed Carlo that they too are not just called to be saints, but they can become saints. Having him so close to my age and what he likes that I like, PlayStation and web design, it just kind of shows me that you don't got to be like some priest or cardinal. Even I can be something like to God and have a connection with him, just like he did. We have the opportunity to have a relationship with God himself, with Christ himself in the Eucharist, and that is eternal. It's uh, eternal for all of humanity, but it's also very individual and eternal for each person. Their faith to the Eucharist, if I could have that much of that, I'd be okay with it.